If you woke up thinking there was going to be a coaching change in Washington, you'll be disappointed. Two players hit the injured reserve, including last year's All-Pro. And we're going to talk about who is going to replace them here on your 9 October Daily Commanders update. Let's go. <music> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to your Daily Commanders update for 9 October. I'm Nathan Perry. That's the Stoner. We are Ref the District on the Believe Sports Network and Stoner. It is a Monday, a little holiday, federal holiday going on here, and Ron Rivera takes the, the mic to drop some unfortunate news for Washington players and fans of those players. But first, we all kind of were talking and perhaps some of us were hoping for some changes in the staff, but that seems like that's not going to happen. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything is going to happen in terms of coaching changes, at least for now, which makes a whole lot of sense. In-season coaching changes are pretty rare unless something catastrophic takes place. Uh, you, you know, a Thursday night national television blowout loss to a winless team can sometimes make that happen. Uh, uh, but I don't think we can really look forward to anything like that happening because it's just there's nobody walking through the door that's going to just all of a sudden turn things around. There is something to be said for accountability to say, Hey, well, look, we just can't let Jack Del Rio continue having this defense give up 30 points every single week and then just turn our heads or, or turn our backs and say, well, okay, I uh, just let it keep happening. You got to do something. You have to hold some people accountable, but this is not the week. Apparently it's just not going to happen. And, and I don't think it will happen this season again, unless something catastrophic happens and they get blown out again, which I don't think is going to happen. Nathan, by the way, fingers crossed. It doesn't yeah. happen there. Yeah. Uh, Josh Harris known as being a patient sports owner, Justina mm -hmm. Anderson here, uh, tweeting out some information along that as well, uh, to include kind of the things you're talking about there, Stoner, right? Like there's, not really expecting a change. Josh Harris wants to let it play out, you know, let the season develop. That's what Ron Rivera would like to do as well when it comes to the coordinator, uh, his coordinators, especially with that relationship with Jack Del Rio. Now, Justina does kind of hint that maybe not all of the minority owners might be on board with that. And you can read between the lines there. Sure. Um, but it is going to be, something Washington is probably going to have hovering over them for as long as they continue to struggle. Yeah. You know, Atlanta could be a get right game stoner. Maybe the team's three and three headed into the giants and the giants are pretty woeful this season. So maybe they do something good there. And um, the media, of course, talking with Ron Rivera in that as well, you know, how do you prevent two and three? becoming two and six like it has in previous seasons. I, th I think there's some interesting things at play here as well in, in that as much as from the outside looking in, as much as we despise the record that Ron Rivera has put up over the last three plus seasons now, and it's just, it's not good. It's a losing record. And even with the one playoff year, it's, it's, there's been almost no, sustained success and the draft picks and the and the free agents and all of that the guys in that locker room they highly respect ron rivera as a coach this is not a case of let's just throw a guy out there let's throw him under the bus like a steve spurrier type where you know he's just kind of out there and and coaches or players don't respect that type of coach who really doesn't pay attention and is not professional and all that these guys respect him, and there are some professional leaders in that locker room, no doubt about it. The guys like John Allen and Terry McLaurin and Jeremy Reeves, mm -hmm. who we'll talk about here in a little bit, guys like that who are captains of this team, they respect Ron Rivera, and they do not want Ron Rivera to be let go, regardless of the success of the team in the middle of the year. They don't want him to be embarrassed because of what they're doing on the field. And I think that's going to show up against Atlanta. We've got all week to talk about Atlanta, but I think that's important to note. 
win or lose, I think Washington's really going to show up in a much better effort than they showed against Chicago. One could hope because that effort against Chicago was God awful. It was. I think part of it may be a little bit of a hangover, keeping up with Philadelphia the week before. Maybe overconfident in your ability to take out the winless bears. Now you got an Atlanta team that is quickly becoming a lot of people's favorite dark horse to upset some teams with some good talent. And unfortunately, Washington is going to be without some talent as they face them as two players are going to hit injured reserve safety, Derek Forrest with a shoulder injury and Jeremy Reeves and all pro last year on special teams both heading to IR and Quan Martin Martin and Percy Butler are expected to kind of fill that Derek Forrest role. Derek Forrest last year was kind of a uh, an exciting piece and we thought maybe Washington finally settled in on their free safety. He's played okay this season. You can't really say anybody on the defense has been playing great having the what they've given up what they've given up. So what should we expect going from Derek Forrest to either Percy Butler or Quan Martin? Percy Butler, by the way, seeing some significant snaps anyways on defense, now going to be seeing quite a few more. Yeah, there's going to be a huge sort of um, lots of switching and changes in that defensive backfield because Percy Butler, he was not behind Derek Forrest. He wasn't his replacement. He was out on that field when they were putting three safeties out there. So now he's going to have to become the everyday player at that free safety spot. So who's going to fill his role in terms of coming in as that third safety? I mean, it's not going to be Jeremy Reeves because Jeremy Reeves is hurt as well. So is it going to be another corner? Is it going to be a Danny Johnson? Is it going to be a Christian Holmes? Um, I mean, there's just so much going on. And you got guys coming up from practice squad, guys getting signed to the practice squad. For an already uh, team, a team that is already getting just beat up in that defensive backfield on the stat sheet, now they're getting beat up in the injury front. That's not a great combination, and it's going to be tough to see because Quan Martin, what has he played? Ten defensive snaps at the most, if that. All year? Yeah. If that, I don't even think he's gotten to ten, and all of a sudden he's going to have to play a significant role in that position to replace the Percy Butler role or the Emmanuel Forbes role when Forbes goes out for that third safety. It's a mess back there. And I don't know how it's going to necessarily get any better. Now, the next couple of weeks, they've got teams that are not big passing teams in terms of Atlanta and the giants or haven't shown an ability so far this year to light you up. Although Atlanta had a good week last week, they're just known for running the ball. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a mess right now in that defensive backfield, and and hopefully they can get it figured out by Sunday. Quan Martin currently with zero defensive. Oh, he snap. didn't get any this yeah. past week. I thought he got he at did, least a couple. He did not get any with uh, against Chicago. Four games, of course, he sat out one game with that concussion. Hmm. This might be for Quan Martin a great opportunity, though. And I've mentioned one of the things that he's been struggling with is. Right now, Jack Del Rio in this coaching staff has been trying to make him either a free safety, a strong safety, a corner guy, which is something he did to some degree of success in Illinois. It's the reason why he was picked in the second round of this year's draft. Now they get to just see what he is like as a free safety because he could potentially just see time at that, which I'm excited for because, again, This guy came in kind of highly touted as the 16th pick in the second round. And so, you know, the talents there. And so now hopefully they'll be able to hone in on that particular skill set of his going forward. But are they going to give him that chance though, Nathan, you say it's his opportunity, but are, are they even going to give it to him because they haven't yet. So are they going to give him that chance to go out there all of a sudden throw him right into the fire and say, you haven't played one defensive snap all year, but here, go out and play 80. Well, maybe not 80 stoner, but I mean, Percy Butler is obviously going to get the first crack at it, but somebody's got to fill what Percy Butler was doing before when they played with three safeties. And now you can potentially see Quan Martin out there. Maybe 
in a full-time role, Quan Martin focuses in and takes that free safety spot. And Percy Butler stays in the spot that he's kind of etched out in the defense this year. We'll see. And don't forget, we put this out last week. And if you haven't seen any of our daily commanders updates of all the second round picks, only three of the second round picks of all 32 second round picks, only three have yet to play an offensive or defensive snap. One is uh, Will Levis, QB. Yeah, Will Levis, right? Um, Another is One. a, a, a uh, Scruggs, Juice Scruggs, who's on injured reserve from Houston injured in uh, the preseason. And then the other one's Quan Martin. Quan Martin. The only one, basically. He's basically the only second round pick who has not played a snap for either the defensive or offensive side. That's telling. That's telling, Nathan. And sure, he missed one game, but he's played in four. Yeah. So that's about to change. And we're about to see quite a bit of him. So we'll see what the young man has and games going forward. Of course, with those two going to IR, the commanders signed uh, practice squad safety Terrell Burgess to the active roster. So that's filling okay. one of the spots. So that's that's probably your Jeremy Reeves kind of replacement as it's a safety for safety, but it is also a guy who's going to be the fifth uh, safety on the roster. So I wouldn't expect too much from Terrell Burgess, but he is familiar with the defense and can come in and kind of fill in some gaps where needed. So moving quite along there with the roster moves, a couple pr uh, practice squad moves. Josh Pryor, defensive lineman from Bowie State, is uh, re-signed to the practice squad, was with the commanders, and I mean not re-signed uh, to the practice squad, but re-signed to the team as he was with the commanders throughout camp. Also throughout camp was Joshua Kalu. Join now joining the practice squad was with Washington throughout parts of the summer as well. I don't expect we're going to see these people, you know, take the field stoner, but are you expecting anything from them? from those two probably not uh, i think that that next um tweet on the the slide there the tweet is really telling and kind of what i wanted to lead into concerning those guys that you talked about burgess and Pryor and kalu and everybody else is that what ben standing is saying here is that of course none of these guys not one of them including these guys were picked up by another team when they were cut and there's just there's just nobody out there that is just going to come in and fix this defense. It's going to be up to the guys in the room. It's going to be up to the Jonathan Allens and the Duran Paynes and so on and so forth that are going to have to fix it themselves because there's no savior out there. Uh, what's the guy? Jabril Cox is not going to come in and save this defense, no matter what we think of Jabril Cox and Cody Bart. He's not going to come in and save, and there's nobody on that practice squad. There's nobody getting called up. Terrell Burgess. God bless him. He's not going to come in and save this defense and turn him in from a 31st ranked defense to the 15th ranked defense. It ain't going to happen. It's just, they don't have the depth. They don't have the players either already there or who are out there floating around waiting for a job. It's just, they're going to have to do it from within. Which is something we have seen them do in previous seasons. They there. start low, they get together they work. Sometimes it's an addition by subtraction as William Jackson gets cut or sent away anyways. And then uh, Washington starts to improve with the team that stays. So it'll be interesting. Ron Rivera talked in the presser today a little bit about that and some of the changes that they're looking at. And they think that it's all fixable stoner and that they can really get together and gel and improve as a team. Washington only two and three now has two winnable games coming up before hosting Philadelphia. And those are, those should be your get right games. So we'll see how they can react to that. It was, and to your point, by the way, on the depth in the Quan Martin aspect of not having played any defensive snaps, the entire draft from Washington today outside of Emmanuel Forbes has only seen 17 offensive or defensive snaps, not a lot of depth, even though quite a few of us were thinking this was, and two, Ron Rivera said it, right? The most well-rounded roster he's had since joining. And you would not expect that to mean two and three. So something's got to give. 
but we do it's not all doom and gloom stoner it's not all it's doom not, and gloom. we not. have we have one good piece of news as the team is celebrating the franchise record for a defensive tackle the sack re- record now belongs with jonathan allen congratulations maybe some applause are in order i, I mean it's, it's hard to celebrate those on the heels of a of a drubbing right and jonathan allen i'm sure feels the same way he's probably like all right cool but can we win the game yeah yeah so. good on jonathan allen we've been kind of talking about this the last couple of weeks with him chasing that record for defensive tackles good on him he he deserves all the accolades He's a stand-up guy. He talked about it after the game against Chicago to where he said, uh, you you know, he said, look, this is on us. It doesn't matter that we're a whole bunch of first round picks. We have to do our job better. We have to play better as a team. And, and again, nobody's coming through that door to save this defense. It's, it's the people who are in that room. They're going to have to fix it. Yeah. Jonathan Allen having a, a down season for him, which is still a good season for most defensive tackles. Agree. Um, so hopefully all this will come together in a victory for Atlanta, and we will get you there. So you can check out tomorrow's Daily Commanders update where we're going to break down a few little bit, a uh, few more stats and see how Washington can take that on. And Wednesday, we'll have our live show. Be sure to join us at 7.30. Thursday will be another daily commanders update friday hit us up then as well and then saturday your preview for the atlanta game with the atlanta side so make sure you'll check that out on saturday but until next time hey for all you old heads out there tim duncan ain't walking through that door be a fan